The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple and how it was adorned with these beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the day will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. And they asked him, teacher, when will this be? And what will the sign that this is about to take place, what will that be? And he says, beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place, but the end will not follow immediately. And then he said to them, nations will rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to, test, to testify, so make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls." This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Well, that's a real happy gospel, isn't it? A whole lot of dark language, end time stuff, and um, uh, what, 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 what is Jesus talking about here when we get into this gospel? Um, he's speaking directly to the disciples, but it's really important to know kind of what happens before this to understand why Jesus is saying what he's saying and how he's saying it. Just before this gospel, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he tells them to be, beware of those people in the temple, the Pharisees and the scribes, the leaders, because they like to wear long robes and say really long prayers so people look at them and they feel important. They also, when, someone, when a man and a woman are married and the man dies, they take the man's property and everything that that man owns, so that way the widow is left with nothing. They're devouring widows' houses. So he's warning them about this, these Pharisees and these scribes that are up in the temple, and he's telling the disciples, look out for that. And then right after that, he points out a man that's walking up to the offering plate who breaks out a big old wad of bills, and he pulls out like a third of them, and he places it into the plate. He's like, look how much that guy gave. And then right after that, he shows a widow walking up with two coins, all that she owns, and she puts those in the plate. And it's almost as if he's looking at them saying, do you see it? Do you see what I'm talking about? And that's when the disciples say in our gospel today, Jesus, look how beautiful these stones are. Look how beautiful this building is. Look at all these gifts that are given to God. And they don't see it. They don't see it. So then Jesus says, not a single one of these stones is going to be here when the time comes. All will be thrown down. And that's when they're saying, whoa, 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 whoa. When is that going to happen? Tell us, Jesus, when is that going to happen? They're stuck in the self just like the Pharisees were, only looking after themselves. They're not even thinking about anybody else. They can't even see when Jesus is saying, those people devours widows' houses, and as if on cue, a widow walks up and gives two coins. They can't see it. They can't see it. So Jesus says, none of this is going to be here when the time comes. What are we doing right now? Because what we do does matter. And that's whenever he goes into all these things that are going to happen. As I was studying uh, for this sermon, uh, there's a, a scholar that pointed out Jesus is introducing the disciples to something called the liminal space. Liminal space. Anybody ever heard of that before? Liminal space? It's an interesting phrase. You can look it up later, but I'm going to give you the basic definition for you right now. The liminal space is the threshold between what was and what will be the threshold between what was and what will be. It's a time of waiting. But this time of waiting and this in-betweenness is anxious. It's uncertain. It's uncomfortable. It was described to me like you are on a flight and you're going to a foreign country 
and you have a layover in yet a different country, and you don't speak those languages there. And you're sitting there waiting to try to figure out when your next flight is, what gate you're supposed to go to, and nobody speaks your language. You're stuck. You're anxious. You're scared a little bit. What if I miss that flight? Your mind's racing. Another example is like you're parked your car at the very back of a parking lot, and it's dark, and you're by yourself, and you have to make that walk all by yourself. You can see the car. You know where you're going, but there's that feeling inside What's going to happen? I do that every Sunday morning. I park on the far end of the parking lot, and it's dark, and I walk across that liminal space just, you know, just making sure nobody's here. <laughs> if anybody's here, come out and talk. It's a hard spot to be. They talk about the liminal space when people break up. What was? But what will be? What's going to happen? Nobody loves me. It talks about whenever we get a new job or when we move. What's going to happen? What will be? That's the liminal space. And so Jesus is describing this to the disciples and that they will have that feeling of dread and worry and uncomfortableness. He says there's going to be wars, insurrections, earthquakes, famines, plagues, dreadful portents, whatever that is. All kinds of crazy things are going to happen. And before all that happens, they're going to bring you up to the synagogues, even in the prisons, and they're going to take care of you on my name. But no matter what, don't prepare for yourself your defense in advance. God will give you the words. God will be your thoughts. God will be your actions. And not a single hair on your head will perish. In fact, by your endurance, you will gain your souls. In another translation, it says, you will gain eternal life. You will gain salvation. So this time in between, this liminal space, this in-betweenness that the disciples are wrestling with, is it time for them to not think about how do I make sure I'm on the right side when the time comes when all the stones are, are, are toppled or whenever my shell is gone, that I'm good, I've made it, but during that time, make sure that I am serving others using the words that God gives me, the thoughts that God gives me, the actions that God gives me. That's where the endurance comes from in this liminal space. And the thing is, these disciples thought that Jesus was going to come back a second time during their lifetime. Before they died, they were expecting it to happen. So they went and served and got rid of everything and tried to live in that time before what will be and doing all that they could. They weren't perfect, but they were really going after it. And we know the end of their story. Most of them were persecuted for their faith. And then you jump ahead to Paul, who wrote to the Thessalonians, our second lesson today. Paul's writing to a group of people that also think Jesus is going to come back in their time. They believe that the second coming is, is happening. And I like to describe Thessalonians like this. Imagine a grumpy old man. None of y'all here. I'm not talking about anybody here. <laughs> Unless you come up afterwards and say, were you talking about me? And I'll, I'll be like, no. Okay, so the grumpy old man is pulling out their barca lounger in their front yard, right? In the front yard, pulling out the barca lounger, going out going to sit in it, kick the legs back, and just, ah. That's to me is the Thessalonians, because they're all of a sudden realizing, I don't have to do anything. I can just sit back and relax. Jesus is coming. Why do I need to help my neighbor? Why do I need to go to work? Why do I need to make my bed? Why do I need to do this, that, and the other? If Jesus is coming, what does it matter? He's going to come in my lifetime. Paul's looking at them saying, by doing this, you're causing a burden to your loved ones, to society, to the other, to the widow. You're a Pharisee, only looking after yourself. If you're so concerned about the hairs on your head, endure, serve others. Talk to God and serve others. But what about us? Are we in the Barker lounger? Are we navel-gazing? Are we enduring? Because we have seen wars insurrections, plagues, famines, dreadful portents. We've seen kingdoms rise against kingdoms, nations rise against nations. We've seen persecution for faith. Is the time now? Are we so concerned with making sure that I'm on the right side of it, that I'm good, that I've checked off the box of I'm faithful? Uh, please take me home, Jesus, when that time comes. 
Or are we relying on the Spirit to fill us with God's words, the Spirit to fill us with God's thoughts, God's actions, and then acting on those, seeking God, serving others? Because Jesus tells us that not a single hair on our head is going to be harmed. Nothing. Nothing can separate us from that. And then he says, by your endurance, that's where salvation is. By your endurance, that's eternal life. By your endurance, that's where you gain your soul. Don't we pray for that? Every church service in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come where? On earth. We're asking for it right now. We're asking for this to happen right now. So what we do does indeed matter. We can sit back, relax, and not do anything and be a Thessalonian. We can be selfish and be like the Pharisees and the scribes. Or, or we can listen to that still small whisper inside of us that's saying, help your neighbor, love others, serve, get out of yourself. Because that's where the eternal life is. That's where salvation is. That's where we find the beautiful thing that Jesus has given us, that soul. So I guess the basic message here today of Jesus talking about all these horrible things that are going to happen is seek God and do what? Serve others. Amen.